guys requested at the end of yesterday's video, and that is chicken Alfredo lasagna roll-ups. Now, roll-ups are a little easier than traditional lasagna because instead of layering the noodles, then layering the cheese, and layering the sauce, the noodle cheese sauce, noodle cheese sauce, all the way up, and then when it's finished, trying to cut through all of those layers, uh, roll-ups, you just slather everything into one lasagna noodle, roll it up, place it in the pan, slather it with sauce, and bake it. Also, when you go to serve it, you just serve everybody a little single roll-up. So it looks nice, it tastes amazing, it's super easy to make, and so let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing that we're gonna do is actually to make the homemade Alfredo sauce. Now, if you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, please go ahead and comment and let me know that, um, that you're watching and that everything is, that the audio and visual and everything is working and coming through, and make sure comments are working <laughs> before we get into this for too long. Oops, wrong thing. I'm trying to go to Facebook to see the comments so that I can respond to them. And it's always that fun little um, technical stuff at the beginning that's just so enjoyable. Okay, looks like it is working on Facebook. YouTube isn't quite live yet. Sasha, welcome. Hi. Okay. Um, sorry. I'm gonna wash my hands one more time before getting started. Okay, so homemade Alfredo sauce. Now, traditional classic Alfredo sauce that you would find in Italy is made with butter, little cream sometimes, uh, and quality Parmesan cheese. Now, we don't have the same quality of butter and Parmesan that they do in Italy here in America, uh, but you can still make it that way. It's just, it's good as a pasta sauce, but it's not necessarily great for everything else. So the other things that I make like this lasagna, or my Alfredo pizza, I like to have something a little bit more stable. So my homemade Alfredo sauce is actually made uh, with a cream base. We're gonna start with a roux, turn it into a bechamel sauce, and then turn it into a Mornay sauce. And Mornay sauce is just a white sauce that's made with cheese. Uh, and we're gonna use Parmesan, and that's what makes it taste like Alfredo sauce. This is the same recipe that I use to make my homemade mac and cheese. I just add cheddar and Gruyere and Monterey Jack to that recipe for that flavor profile. For this one, I just add Alfredo. You can literally make this cheese sauce with any cheese that you like, and it's gonna be delicious on pretty much any pasta, period. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is get my cameras ready to go. Oh, they're not even on. Uh, Jill, hi. Uh, Mandy, I'm so glad it's clear on your end. Lydia, it's working for you, thank you. Love you too, thanks for watching and joining us. Okay, uh, overhead camera is working. So we're gonna start with the butter. Whoop, <laughs> there we go. Let's turn our pan on so that it can start to melt. And we're gonna get that melted. I should have turned that pan on ahead of time. Anyway, while that's going, I've already started some water. It's not boiling yet, but it will be for the noodles. And I've also preheated the oven for the lasagna as well. So let's get something to start with. All right. So what a roux does is it actually is a thickener uh, and sta uh, it's stable. So if you, it has a lot of different colors. The longer you cook it, the darker it's going to get. A roux is uh, fat of some kind, in this case butter, but oil also works, uh, and flour. And in this case, I'm also using a little bit of cornstarch. Uh, if you're making anything that's going to have cheese in it, you're going to want to add the cornstarch. What the cornstarch does, it helps keep it from the cheese from getting grainy, and you end up with a nice, clear, smooth, not clear, uh, smooth, I meant without imperfection. That's the clear definition I was going for. Um, sauce. Uh, that doesn't get, it will still be like nice and cheese pulley, but it won't be cheese grainy. If any of you guys have ever made a cheese sauce like that with just butter and flour and it's gotten grainy at the end, uh, if you add, take away a little bit of the flour and substitute it for a little bit of the cornstarch, that should solve your problem. So, there we go. It's getting all melty. So I use a little bit of flour and a little bit of cornstarch uh, along with butter for mine. Now, at the beginning it'll be very white and you want to cook it at least long enough that you no longer have that floury taste to it. So I'd give it a couple minutes. 
Uh, the longer you cook it, the darker it'll be. If you're going to be making like Cajun food, you're gonna want to go all the way to like brick red. Uh, the longer you go, the nuttier the flavor will actually be as that butter and flour cook together. Uh, but it will also be less of a thickener. So in that case, it's more of a flavor enhancer and not a thickener. The earlier that you stop it and add your other ingredients, the more of a thickener it will be and the less of a nutty flavor that you're going to get out of it. So that's where that falls. I tend to go slightly tan, not all the way to like an almondy color um, for mine. So personal preference though. Uh, my daughter the other day was uh, making homemade mac and cheese. I make my kids cook at least once a week so they can learn kitchen, you know, handy stuff. And now that she's in college, part of her rent every month is that she cooks dinner twice a week. So she's trying to, I make her try different foods every week too. So she's not just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Where my 16 year old, he makes the same thing over and over and over again. He's just getting used to uh, creating good habits. Anyway, she made our homemade mac and cheese the other day. Uh, and it's actually really interesting having someone in house make my recipes because she'll be like, uh, I just followed the directions. I'm like, what are you talking about? It was so clear. And I'll reread the directions through her eyes and realize, okay, that could have been written a little bit better. <laughs> Um, it's one of the reasons that I make videos is to hopefully give some more clarity because recipes aren't always the clearest thing in the world. I'm trying to be better at recipe writing though. Um, anyway, she let it go really, really dark. All right, here we go. It's nice and mostly melted. So flour and cornstarch. Um, anyway, so it wasn't as thick, but it did have a really nutty flavor and the kids were all like, oh, this isn't, this isn't our normal mac and cheese. And it was interesting. It totally still worked. It just had a different flavor profile. So again, it just comes down to personal preference. Now you want to stir this until it becomes a nice paste. There we go. And you want to make sure that there are no chunks of flour. So if you have a little chunk of flour, make sure that you get to that before it cooks longer. And then you just let it cook for a while. Super, super easy. This is a good time to prepare other ingredients. Now, when I make my homemade mac and cheese, I also add some garlic and some shallots at this stage. Uh, for Alfredo, I typically don't, but you totally can, right? Especially garlic, right? Garlic's a great flavor to go with Alfredo. We're actually adding garlic into the cheese sauce though, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, Cassie, everything's good. Thank you so much for letting me know. Uh, Black Butterfly Flaker, welcome back. Um, enjoy the video. Okay, here we go. So we've got some nice bubbles going on. Oh, camera switch. There we go. Got some nice bubbles going on. And I'm going to go ahead and add the other ingredients now. This is all melted. It's come together and it is totally going to work. Again, the longer you cook it, the darker it'll get. But the flour at this point has been, the flavor is has been cooked out, so we are good to go. So I'm going to add the milk. And the cream. Use a spatula and get all of that cream out of that container. And there we go. And then you want to stir this, making sure to scrape the bottom so no butter flour mixture gets left on the bottom. And you want to stir it and make sure that all of that butter and flour dissolve into the milk. And cream. So what we're looking for now, and this will just take a couple minutes, is to bring this to a slight simmer, just under boiling. Sasha, you make yummy chili lime shrimp Alfredo, and it takes 24 to 48 hours put together. Dang. Oh, you marinate the shrimp. That makes sense. <laughs> yes, I, I'm not very good at recipes that require marinating for long periods of time. I tend to be like, you know what sounds good right now, and I want it right then. So I have a couple Indian dishes that uh, it's better if you marinate the chicken, but yeah, I often forget. Uh, Lydia, you like my recipes and my videos? You're too beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. You were so sweet. 
I appreciate that. All right, so while this is coming to a boil, I can hear my water boiling back there. So we're going to add our lasagna noodles. And you want to make sure, luckily because lasagna noodles have those ripples on the edges, you, they usually, you don't have to worry about them like attaching themselves to each other and sticking together usually. Oh, it's like my finger right in the water. Ow. Um, but I do still tend to put the noodles in like three at a time instead of a whole batch at once. Because when those noodles hit that boiling water, I really don't want them uh, to all of a sudden get stuck together. Oh, I had one short noodle. Once they've been in there for just a second, you can usually kind of bend the noodles because some are always sticking out at the ends. There we go. Bend the noodles to make sure that they are in there all the way. Put the timer on for minutes. Okay. Let's come back and see how our sauce is doing. It's your boyfriend favorite dish. She says it's worth the wait. That's really nice. It's really smart to always have a couple dishes that are somebody's favorite that you make. Probably, I'm trying to think. I mean, my kids are stuck with me for the most part, but uh, my kids' most requested dishes are probably my copycat Penny Rustica um, from Macaroni Girl. Uh, homemade mac and cheese we make weekly. Uh, homemade pizza we probably make every other week. Um, my kids love pasta dishes and rice dishes. I make a lot of Indian food and a lot of curries, a lot of Japanese food. Um, I don't know. My kids really like tamales and beans, but that's more of a production, kind of like what you were talking about, Sasha. That takes a lot more to make, so we don't have those as often. But we probably have them about three times a year. All right, so I'm getting some steam from my um, sauce. So it shouldn't take too much longer. I just keep stirring to make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom, especially with these stainless steel pans. Nothing is worse than something burning, right? All right. Uh, Joseph, hello, welcome back. Uh, Grammy Pip, thanks for joining us. So good to see you today. All right, so oftentimes, hold on, I'm checking on the pasta. I always like to make sure I'm giving the pasta stirs throughout to just keep it from, again, keep those noodles from sticking together. Nothing worse than a big lasagna noodle stuck to another big lasagna noodle and then not cooking all the way. So a lot of recipes that call for uh, cream-based sauces like this say to cook until it's thick, but I found that just cooking until it comes to a slight boil, small simmer, and then taking it off, uh, turning off the heat is enough. Uh, it will thicken on its own after that. If you cook it until it's thick, then typically as it cools, it gets even thicker, and then you always have to make up for it by adding a little extra um, milk or something on the other end. Uh, you're neat in your kitchen. It's very important. <laughs> it's pretty much the only place I'm neat. I am not known for my cleanliness. I'm a visual person, so I like to be able to see things, which means not necessarily put away. But I do, I do have to keep my kitchen organized. My spices are alphabetized. It's, yeah, it's important to me. All right, we're almost there. I can tell because we're definitely getting thicker. I don't know if you guys can see the difference there. This is definitely thicker than it was, so it should be coming to a boil any second now. And again, we don't want to like bring it to a full boil, but they're just looking for a little simmer. I keep expecting it to be bubbling every time I stop stirring. Uh, this sounds so good. Thank you, Joseph. It is really delicious. So yeah, my kids do love uh, homemade Alfredo mac and cheese, so I make this sauce a lot. Come on. All right, 
right, so let's talk about your Parmesan cheese while we are waiting. Uh, I do not recommend the pre-grated store-bought um, Parmesan cheeses. Certainly not the stuff that you can get in the aisle versus the, 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 you know, the green container ones. Not real Parmesan. Not going to melt. Not going to have the right flavor. Sorry. Heard a little water spitting. Oh, good. And we are at a simmer. Turn off the heat. Actually going to take it off the heat and take this burner away. Okay. And we're going to add our Parmesan. So this is freshly grated. I just grated it about half an hour ago from a Parmesan block. By freshly grating it, you're going to get a much better outcome and flavor profile where if you, um, if you use the pre-grated stuff, even the stuff that you can get in the refrigerated section, what the cheese manufacturers do to, they grate the cheese and then it's actually coated with, I don't know what, to keep it from clumping back together and sticking back together, right? Because you want to be able to have those grated features. But I feel like when you use the pre-grated cheese, and I've, I've done it before, when you use the pre-grated Parmesan cheese uh, to try to make Alfredo, one, the flavor's not as strong, so you end up using even more Parmesan. Um, and two, um, you never get, it, like you can taste the coating. You can taste the difference. It doesn't have that pure Parmesan Alfredo flavor. Uh, this is one of those dishes where quality really, really matters. Now, granted, I'm a from scratch cook, so I think quality matters in pretty much all occasions, uh, but this one for sure uh, is really, really important. All right, so then now what we want to do next while this, while the Parmesan is all melting in, is we want to, um, we want to add our salt and pepper. So I used to use normal pepper, but then somebody on my blog complained and they said you're supposed to use, uh, hold on, white pepper. So now I use white pepper. I don't mind the little black flakes, but some people complain about it. Now white pepper is more fine than traditional pepper. So you want to use a little bit more of it to get the same, um, to get the same flavor. And I just always eyeball it and then taste it. Now Parmesan is a very salty, a very salty cheese. So you don't want to add too much. But all cheeses are always have a slightly different salt content. So I recommend adding a little. And then getting out a tasting spoon. I have a clump of Parmesan hasn't melted there. And giving it a taste. And for me, getting the right flavor of Alfredo is really balancing the salt. What you don't want to do is add too much salt, so go a little at a time. I do like quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon at the beginning and then quarter teaspoon at a time um, after that. And you know, it's just an excuse to taste more and more and more and more Alfredo, I'm just saying. Um, and then I just keep tasting and adding and tasting and adding until I'm happy with it. And of course, make sure you're using a clean spoon every time. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So I'm going to take our final sauce and set it aside. And as it continues to cool, it's going to get even a little bit thicker. If you go too thick, you can always add a little bit of milk to, you know, water it down. But typically you shouldn't have to. Okay, so now we're going to work on our cheese filling. Now, traditional lasagna has a ricotta cheese filling, and that's what we're going to make here. So, you can mix it by hand, but I just, I just get my mixer out. I mix it that way. Let's see. Okay. So, we have... Uh, ricotta cheese, 
And this is just a, a 15 ounce container. And then some mozzarella. Now this is one of those cases where I'm actually okay with it not being freshly grated. There are some recipes where I'm okay with the pre-grated stuff. And this is one of them because we're not trying to melt the mozzarella cheese, right? It's just a part of a cheesy filling. It's going to get all melty in the oven and be delicious. So in this case, pre-grated is fine. And we're also going to add some more Parmesan. Now again, in this case, you can use the pre-grated par Parmesan that you get anywhere, but I just grated a huge block of fresh, so I have plenty of fresh. So we're just going to go with that. And garlic. And then some salt and pepper. And in this case, it's fine to use normal pepper. Okay. Oops, not plugged in. And we're going to give that a start. Okay. Now I just heard my timer go off for my noodles. So I'm going to give those a look. Oh good. They look perfectly cooked. So we're going to put aside our filling for just a second and prepare the noodles. So I'm going to just left my noodles if I just leave my noodles here in the colander what's going to happen is that they're going to stick together while I'm working on the filling so we don't want that but we do want to let them cool slightly so we can roll them up and touch them without totally burning our hands so what I like to do is take um, take a pan and put some parchment paper down I'm going to take some of my olive oil spray I'm just going to add the noodles there. And this way, whoo, hot! Usually I keep my colander right next to where I'm working. And this way they're not going to stick to each other. It's not going to be difficult later to separate them. And they're going to have a chance to cool down. I also have a chance this way to count how many intact lasagna noodles I have because sometimes while you're cooking them, they break apart. So I'm going to do another round of my olive oil. And you, if you don't want to use the spray, you can, um, you can use, uh, you can brush olive oil on top. It's just like if you're when I make spaghetti noodles, I never, whoa, hot, whoa, so hot. <laughs> Every once in a while you'll get a noodle that's just fine, and then you'll get a noodle that's like burning your fingers hot. Um, um, spaghetti. When I drain my spaghetti noodles, I don't, um, I don't rinse them. And the reason... I don't rinse noodles is that when you rinse your noodles you're actually washing all of the starch off your noodles. Oop, more spray. You're actually washing all the starch off your noodles and that's um, help, that's actually is what helps the sauce adhere to the noodles. So if you wash all of that off then your noodles and your sauce don't hold together as well. So I always just, after I've rinsed my spaghetti noodles, I just um, 
drizzle some olive oil over them. Okay. And almost done. Oop, that's a ripped one. My kids like the really bad ripped ones. I just eat them plain. Um, okay. Um, Anyway, so yeah, so I just, olive oil is not going to mess up with your noodles' ability to adhere to the sauce or anything else, but it also keeps them from clumping and sticking together. So, uh, yeah. All right, let's go back to the cheese filling. So, whoop, almost lost my glass measuring cup there. So, you have a couple options for this. Uh, I always recommend giving it a little taste to make sure that you have enough of the salt and pepper. Mm. I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt. There we go. All right, so part of what I have to go with this is I have chicken, I have the filling, and I have the sauce. Now you can add any other components that you want to make your lasagna more in the flavor profile that you're looking for. So when I make my chicken Alfredo pizza, I like to add um, spinach, mushrooms, bacon, green onions, and artichoke hearts. You can add all of those same things to this if you want. Um, what I have today is artichoke hearts that I've chopped and some fresh spinach that I've chopped. Now you have two different options. You can add them right to the cheese mixture and mix them in, which is what I typically do, or you can layer them separately. You can layer the cheese mixture, then sprinkle on your artichoke heart, sprinkle on your spinach, sprinkle on your chicken. It's totally up to you. Mixing everything into one container obviously makes it easy. You just have to spread onto your noodles once, but then you also run the risk of maybe one roll up being chicken heavy and one roll up not having any chicken at all, right? So no matter how good you mix it. So I am going to I'm gonna make some of the artichoke hearts. Mix it in half and see what I think. And this is just a 12 ounce container of artichoke hearts that I chopped. Or not. Come on, camera. There we go. And I'm gonna add my spinach to this. But I'm gonna leave the chicken separate. Now for the chicken, you can cook your chicken however you want. I would recommend two breasts, makes about a cup and a half. Um, I, you, I like to use up rotisserie chicken. I buy those big rotisserie chicken packets at Costco and use it for recipes like this. Um, but in the past where I haven't had rotisserie chicken, I've just baked a couple breasts in the oven and then shred them when they come out. So that part is just totally up to you. All right, let's get our assembly station ready. Oh, <laughs> stuck to the counter. Down the counter real fast. All right. Typically, I make this in a nine by thirteen, but I thought today, just to get things going, I would do I would split it up. So I'm going to do half in this eight by eight. And then while that's in the oven, I'm going to finish rolling up the other half so I can get this in the oven a little bit faster because I didn't pre-make a whole batch because my kids are with their dad for the next week and I don't need that much food. Um, okay, so to begin with, we're going, ooh, come on. You gotta love when nothing works. There we go. Sorry, I'm stirring up the sauce real fast. It's been over here on the side. Okay, so I'm gonna take our sauce, cut over here, and I'm gonna add, in the full nine by 13 dish, I tend to add like uh, just over a cup You don't need this to be super...
super thick, the sauce at the bottom. We just want enough sauce that our noodles aren't going to stick. Okay. So, grab our first noodle on the counter that I just cleaned. Let's grab some of the filling. And this does get messy. I find it easier to spread it with my hand. Um, than to try to spread it with my spatula and get it even. So, personal preference. So, and you don't want this to be too thick. The first time I made it, I made it too thick and my rolls were just ginormous, like cinnamon rolls instead of little noodle roll-ups. Remember, this is layers and layers and layers and layers all in one. All right, and then I like to break up my chicken into a little bit smaller pieces than they typically come so that it's just easier to cut and bite. All right, and then start on one side. Maybe that piece is still a little bit big. It'll also roll easier if you kind of think about putting the chicken in this way versus like in pieces this way, right? Does that make sense? So we have our roll up here of our filling and our chicken, and we're going to put it right down inside our pan. Now, in a normal 9x13 pan, I can get 15 3x5 of the rolls, so we'll see what I can fit in here. And spread. Again, don't go too thick. Usually, I promise you will probably go too thick the first time that you make it. It's a pretty normal thing to do because you're like, well, I want the whole thing covered, but it's okay to have some little bald spots. Like, all right, and then we're gonna add in our chicken. went a little too chicken heavy again and then roll it up and we're going to repeat so again in a 9 by 13 I typically get a three across because this eight's a little bit narrower uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna have to put some other ones a little sideways but and then you just repeat over and over and over and over again. This is a fun one uh, to do assembly style, like with my kids. One person will, one person will spread the cheese mixture. One person will add the chicken. One person will roll up. Or you can all just do your own noodles. Um, I tend to, I like to be the one to um, at, roll it up because I can see if they've added maybe a little too much chicken or cheese and kind of fix it beforehand. Um, when I when I let everybody do their own, uh, they <laughs> tends to get um, tends to get a little overwhelmed. But personal preference. And again, anything that you think would taste good with chicken and Alfredo, feel free to add. I was thinking about adding green onions and bacon, but um, yeah, decided not to last minute. Figured I would just stick with what I already had on the blog and go from there. So I would love to hear what kind of toppings you would put in yours. Uh, Holly, Kathy, welcome. Tina, nice to see you too. Thanks for joining us from Pennsylvania. Joseph, good job. Thank you so much. Am I doing this tomorrow? I was not planning on it. I was planning on taking the weekend off and then hitting, uh, coming live again on Monday. I was going to ask you guys uh, what recipes you would like to see next week. So I still have... Uh, how to make the perfect omelet uh, as a video plan. 
I also have um, making um, homemade pasta, pasta uh, as a video plan. So let me know what you're thinking. And then, of course, we still have, we've talked about doing French bread. Uh, the only thing French bread is I like to use fresh yeast, and they're not shipping fresh yeast right now. It's really hard to find in the States, more of a European thing. Um, but I can make it with American yeast. I just like doing it with fresh yeast, and I don't have any right now. Um, but yeah, we could do baguettes or brioche or, um, uh, oh man, what is the other French bread that I'm thinking of? Uh, my brain. This definitely goes faster with multiple people. <laughs> my kids just left to spend the next uh, week with their dad for spring break, so I'm feeling a little sad right now. Nothing big, but I don't know. I just miss them when they're not around. I kind of like them. It's actually been really fun having them not be in school. I'm not very good at the whole homeschooling thing. We've mostly just been having fun together. <laughs> but, yeah, I figured they're not going to let a second grader flunk second grade, right? And my high school students, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so you could always do a vegetarian version of this as well, where you're not adding um, the, I mean, obviously not vegan because of all the cheese still, but, um, but you could do it without the chicken if you wanted and just do the Alfredo sauce and the cheese mixture. Uh, homemade pastas, Rhonda's vote. Can you do some simple homemade recipes for us affected by the shelter in place? Um, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> These are recipes just using what I have around my house right now. Um, Yesterday's chili was all stuff from my freezer and pantry. Um, but yeah, I don't do like canned cream of chicken like recipe stuff. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions, uh, B, I would love to hear them. Anything you guys would like to learn. I've already made quite a few videos over the last five years too. So there might already be videos for some of the things that you're thinking of. Like I already have a video on my homemade tomato soup and yeah I don't know I do have an entire room dedicated to food storage I am from Utah after all <laughs> it's kind of what we do um oh the bread sound yummy you're happy just getting to eat warm homemade bread yes we love warm homemade bread remember when I made bagels last week yeah we have so many bagels still you guys my freezer is currently full of we've almost made it through all the homemade bread that I made last week for you guys but um I still have a freezer full of homemade bagels. All right, let's fit a couple more in this way, and then we'll put this one in the oven while I work on the next one. Um, you really haven't, uh, I don't do vegan, no. I am all about cheese and milks and dairies and meats, and yes, I'm a total carnivore, so I apologize. I also don't do sugar substitutes. Uh, I am all about full fat in recipes, so I don't do low fat um, anything. I feel like when you start including low fat ingredients, you lose a lot of the flavor and the dish isn't as filling, so you end up eating more. And I would rather eat less and have the flavor be full and amazing. So yeah, I do not do specialty diets in any way, shape, or form. I'm all full fat, full meat, full cheese, full cream. All that good stuff. Well, what I consider good stuff. <laughs> I guess not everybody does. Um, I might accidentally do some vegan recipes without, like, meaning to. Just like the other day, somebody's like, oh, do you have any keto recipes? I'm like, I don't think so. And she looked at my site. She's like, yeah, this is, like, really keto-friendly, and this is keto-friendly, and this is keto-friendly. And I'm like, I wouldn't know. I don't follow any of those uh, diets, so... I don't really know what's what. All right, I think we can get one more in here. Hold on. Get my mixers out of the way. Like I said, you can just mix this cheese mixture by hand. It's not a big deal. I just find it easy to just throw everything in here. All right. 
Uh, you're not gonna have fresh yeast either. That is a good point, Jess, uh, Jenna. I know, I just like to make things the right way. And fresh yeast is, I hadn't, I hadn't ever used fresh yeast before, so this is not something that we have in America, but I've been wanting to do a video about the cooking classes that I went to in France and talk about the differences. And fresh yeast just, it was amazing. I don't know why we don't use it more here in America. Anyway, so that was kind of the original plan for those French bread videos. But yes, you're right. <laughs> you guys won't have it either. All right. So then the next question in this recipe is, how do you add your sauce? Notice I always am doing seam side down on these. Hold on, I'm gonna wash my hands. here is do you slather this dish with your sauce and cover all of the pasta from side to side or uh, or do you just go down the center and leave the little ripples on the side now we've talked about uh, baking like pasta before I don't like baked mac and cheese because I don't like my pasta drying out kind of the same thing with this if you just add the sauce down the center those rippled edges are of course going to dry out a little bit, but that being said, um, if you just slather it all, it doesn't look as pretty when it comes out, so you kind of have to balance here. Um, your noodles not drying out and being pretty uh, versus, um, yeah, the, the final presentation is you pull out one of the rolls with the sauce on the center and the ripple showing. It's just a different look. All right, so. side view. Okay, so let's do maybe a row of both. side ones I'm just gonna slather more so we'll have the slather over here on this side of things and we'll have the unslathered one over here on this side of things I'm gonna try to get the sauce to go as far each side as I can Now I, t I like to try to pack them as tight as possible so that sauce is held in. Because we have this space right here and here, we're gonna have a little bit of, I don't know, hold on. I'm gonna see about fitting this in this way and getting one more roll up in. I feel like I'm gonna be happier. All right, let's do one more roll up real fast. I know, a little indecisive meat. I would rather them squish together and how they hold the sauce than um, be a little dry. Quickly add chicken. Oh, 
salami indecisive. I think that'll actually work better because, yeah, the closer this is together, the better it will hold everything. All right, so this side, this half is our slather half, and this half over here is our cleaner half. Now I'm going to take some extra mozzarella, sprinkle the top, All right. Cover it with foil. And oops. Throw it in the oven. Right, now everything is already cooked in there, so all we really want to do is have everything meld together. The noodles are cooked, the chicken's cooked, the cheese doesn't need to be cooked, we just want it to get nice and warm and melty. Everything is safe to eat as is though, so we don't have to worry about safety. Um, so I typically let it go for about 20 minutes. Sorry, a lot of hand washing these days. So I typically let it go for about 20 minutes. Um, but because it's alive and we want to hurry through this, I, um, I've actually put it in for 15. Hopefully by that point, we'll get at least the look that we're looking for so I can pull it out and take a look at it. I'm also going to throw in some garlic bread. So some garlic bread to go with it. All right. In the meantime, I'm going to roll up more. And now is a great time to just sit around and answer any questions that you guys have. Mike, hi. My Uncle Mike is watching. He never watches. This is fun. Uh, Rhonda, you agree you're my kindred spirit when it comes to food. I'm so glad about that. I know a lot of people uh, disagree with me. I'm just, I'm not into fad diets, and I'm, uh, I would rather go for flavor uh, and then just eat in moderation and make healthier choices by just eating less than to eat flavorless, bland food just because it's low fat. So, personal choice. Jenna, that looks amazing. Thank you so much. Joseph, egg salad. Um, like egg salad sandwich? I can do that. Uh, you have a request for soups. All right, I've already shared my chili, my white, ch my white chicken chili, my beef chili, my clam chowder, my tomato soup, and my cheddar broccoli soup. So I already have quite a few soups out there. What soup are you looking for, Joseph? Uh, no problem, you understand. Sorry about that, B. Uh, it's so true, you do eat way more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when some, I don't know. And it affects the recipe a lot. Like, I have a... One of my recipes that calls for cream cheese, somebody the other day, they emailed me probably about two years ago, so not the other day, but two years ago, somebody emailed me and they were like, um, sorry, I'm going to grab a noodle. Uh, they emailed me and they were like, I made this recipe and it didn't work and what could have gone wrong and, and they were describing what happened and I was like, I knew immediately, I'm like, you used low fat cream cheese, didn't you? And they were like, well, yeah, I'm like, stop it, stop it right now. That is not how you cook my food. Another pan, add the sauce to the bottom, there we go. and there we go, have our sauce in the bottom so we can start adding our roll-ups to it, and grab some filling. I actually probably should get a smaller pan out because we already did nine roll-ups and this recipe makes 15. So I'm going to run out of filling before I fill this thing. Oh well. Um, egg salad, you can just imagine it with pesto. Yes, pesto would be great in this. Um, and you can use this same technique with normal uh, lasagna as well, right? I would do the ricotta filling, obviously without the artichoke hearts and spinach. Um, I do the ricotta filling and uh, it's kind of your choice if you want to add any of the sauce 
inside the roll. I don't typically, but you, uh, but you could. Um, so yeah, and then you do the, your beef bolognese on the bottom of the pan, just like this, and then of course on the top of the noodles as well. So, um, I guess if you're doing a sauce and a meat mixture that are separate, like if you have a red sauce and you have a thick meat mixture that you're doing in the middle, I would do the meat mixture inside here with the cheeses, but, um, but yeah, so definitely do the ricotta inside the noodles. I'd consider doing like meat and onions and peppers cooked together in the middle as well. Maybe not added to the tomato sauce and then put the tomato sauce um, along the top and bottom. Just because I kind of, I like the meat inside the roll up and not just as the sauce, if that makes sense. I don't know. All right, looks yummy. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, you can just imagine. Okay. All right, does anybody have any other questions or any other requests? So Joseph has requested egg salad or soup. Uh, uh, Rhonda likes the idea of the homemade pasta. Uh, a couple other people have said that they want to learn more homemade breads. Just let me know and I will make a video on it. So we've already recently done, uh, let's see, we've done beignets, bagels, white bread, um, pretzels, I'm trying to think of what other breads we've done. We've done crescent rolls. I haven't done a live on my Hawaiian rolls um, or brioche or challah bread or, um, yeah, or uh, baguettes, French bread. There we go. So yes, just let me know. I'm trying to think there's, I have, I've been making videos for over five years now. So there are a lot of stuff already out there on my sites. Every time I'm like, oh, we haven't done my Samoa truffle pops. I'm like, oh, nope. I've actually made two videos on my Samoa, my Samoa truffle pops. Um, or my Samoa cupcakes. Nope, we've done that too. Um, yeah, would you guys like to see any cake decorating done during the lives? Obviously those lives tend to be a little bit longer. My cake decorating lives tend to go longer just because it's so much more but we could do like I did an Easter cake last year already um, we could come up with some another kind of Easter cake I guess or we could just stick with recipes too uh, homemade chicken noodle soup oh interesting do you know what you'll be making with your homemade pasta uh, I was thinking about doing uh, just kind of a video on homemade pasta, making a couple different noodles and maybe some ravioli as well. Not necessarily any one dish in particular. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get on my pasta roller and show some spaghetti and some... I do make a lot of homemade ravioli. Um, we really like ravioli. But, um, but yeah, uh, spaghetti... The only thing I don't do is I don't have uh, I don't have a pasta press to be able to make like my homemade uh, to homemade uh, macaroni or other or penne or other noodles like that. I've been thinking about getting one though. Okay, this pan is uh, I've been trying to stretch the filling if you noticed, but I think it's gonna I think I'm gonna make it. We're going to be able to fill this. I'm actually kind of wondering if I should put them in this way instead. Yeah, I think that'll fit better. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know. More about the technique of making homemade pasta than a specific dish is kind of what I was thinking, just because making homemade pasta in and of itself is a pretty involved video without adding anything extra to it. Uh, do I like Copahaga? I do not know what that is. I would love to hear what that is, and I can't Google search it right now because, you know, fingers. So you can tell me what it is. 
Um, I also get asked if I cook with alcohol, and since I don't drink, I don't cook with alcohol. Um, I hate bananas with a fiery passion, so I don't cook with anything banana-y. And let's see. Um, so no low fats, no specialty diets that I like do on purpose at least. <laughs> Might accidentally make something. Um, full sugar, full fat. I don't do sugar substitutes. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of how else I cook because people ask me all the time. I don't use like cream of chicken stuff. <laughs> I guess they call that food. All right, I think two more. I think I have just enough filling for that as well. This will work out perfectly. Um, you'd like to make learn to make ravioli? You've never made that before? Yes, ravioli is so much fun to make. Oh, I'm perfect. I am down to my last noodles as well. So. This is great. And this one I'm actually just going to refrigerate and then freeze. Actually, I'll just go straight to the freezer. So this one I'm going to freeze since it's just me and my 18-year-old um, at home for the next week. And then I will just cook this um, next time she and I want some dinner. We'll do the smaller pan and eat that for the next day or two. And then I still have lots of chili left from yesterday's video as well. Ooh, I'm getting down to almost no filling left. Scraping the bottom of the barrel. That is going to work out nicely. I'm trying to remember which one has the low filling ratio and give that to my daughter. <laughs> okay, not really, but kind of funny. All right, have the last of the chicken. Uh, Caroline, welcome. Nice to see you. Uh... And for some reason, your comment is covered up by something, so I'll have to wait till my hand's clean so I can touch my screen and move it. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I'm going to take off the next couple of days and do some behind-the-scene blog work that needs to be done, like uploading some of the recipes that I've been making in my lives. Um, and I'll be back Monday. Am I planning on doing the same thing I did this week? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, live recipe videos. So you can um, leave in the comments any requests that you have. And we'll try to get that done. Okay. Whew. Let the water get really hot. <laughs> now. I'm going to stir my alfredo sauce again. And now that it's cooled down, it has become really thick. So it's going to be... If you want to leave this on the stove so that the sauce stays a little bit on the runnier side and make it easier to spread, you can totally do that. I would just leave it on low, though, because you don't want it to cook and get thicker through cooking it, right? So you can just leave... You just leave the sauce on low. Um, so that it doesn't get quite so thick as this. Now because I'm going to freeze this, and Alfredo is, anything dairy isn't really great at freezing. I'm actually going to do the slather method for this one to kind of help hold those noodles in place. Uh, or not in place, but hold those noodles from getting too frozen. And I think it will reheat a little bit easier with the slather method. So not as pretty, but more delicious. And since I haven't attempted to freeze this before, this is kind of going to be um, an experiment. Now, the rest of the Alfredo that I have, I'm going to put in Tupperware. 
because one of the great things about making your Alfredo this way with the white sauce method is, um, is that it refrigerates really well. Mm, so good. It reheats really well. Uh, I can either make, um, my daughter's been asking for Alfredo pizza. So we'll probably make Alfredo pizza this weekend. But my other favorite thing to do with this Alfredo sauce is just to make my one hour breadsticks. Uh, which I have a video for on the YouTube channel. Um, just make my one hour breadsticks and just dip them in the Alfredo sauce. It's gloriousness. It's just heaven. Seriously, it's so good. So to freeze this, I'm going to cover it with foil and then I'm going to wrap it multiple times in plastic wrap. So it has like three layers of plastic wrap and then freeze it. And that'll give me the best results. Um, because there's still going to be so much air in it, uh, because I'm not pressing anything right down onto the food, I would say it's only going to last, just a guess, because again, I haven't attempted this before, I would say it's only going to last in the freezer for like a month. You don't want to worry about freezer burn, and anytime you have something or there's a lot of air left inside, you're going to have freezer burn issues, especially something that's liquid-based, more like this. Um, so yeah, we'll probably just cook it next week sometime, and I will let you know how that goes. Carly, you love learning from me. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Uh, maybe a salted caramel pound cake. Nice. I'm not having a hard time finding a solid recipe for salted caramel popcorn cake. Now, my salted caramel popcorn is one of my most popular recipes on the blog. Um, so I am a master at caramel. I don't hear any sizzling yet, so I'm going to leave that for just another two minutes because you kind of want there to be a little bit of bubbling noise coming out from that. Uh, you'll be looking up the one-hour breadstick recipes. Yeah, they're so good and so easy. Um, Portuguese egg tarts. I have not, Joanna. That's a great question. You're making banana bread for two days and <laughs> one birthday cake. Yeah, nothing banana. I, and I'm in a Facebook group where um, uh, somebody was talking about adding banana to their pesto, and I about lost it just thinking about it. Like, why would you do that? Why? And the person's like, we well, can't even taste it. And I'm like, oh, I could. Promise, I could. Um, but yeah, no, no banana bread for me. My kids love it, and I have made a lot of banana recipes for clients. Oh, I forgot to put cheese on this. Uh, I'm actually going to wait to put more mozzarella on this until right before I cook it, a frozen one. So, um, do I find the recipes on your blog? Yes. Both the Alfredo recipe and the Alfredo lasagna roll-up recipes are on the blog. Some of the other videos that I've been making over the last couple of days are not on my blog yet, but they will be by the end of the weekend. That is my job. The next couple of days is just to sit in my front of my computer. I've already edited the pictures, so I just need to uh, get those blog posts written up. I love the creative aspect of this. I love filming live videos. I love filming normal videos. I love taking pictures. I love making the food. I hate writing the blog posts. Oh, it's just, it's the part of the job, the gig that I don't love, but obviously it's the part that pays the best because that's where I make all my money is over on the blog and ads. So uh, you're so kind to share. Oh, thank you, Carolee. You're so sweet. Uh, that's how you feel about coconut. Oh, B, I'm the opposite. Coconut is one of my all time favorite flavors. Caramel, coconut, chocolate, of course, um, peanut butter, lemon, anything, not together, obviously. <laughs> But anything with those, with one of those, or two of those five flavors, and I'm, I'm in heaven. Oh, I adore coconut. Uh, I'm also, what, how, here's a question for you guys. How do you feel about cilantro? I adore cilantro. If a recipe calls for a bunch of cilantro, I use two bunches, because I figure bunches used to be bigger. <laughs> so I go with the old school bunch. Um, but yeah, some, I, I still can't get over that some people think cilantro tastes like toothpaste. Now, I will say, I do, oh, mint. Mint's another flavor that I love anything, but it has to be peppermint. Mint leaf mint, I'm not really a fan of. Uh, I went, I ordered a milkshake probably like five years ago, uh, a mint Oreo, pretty classic flavor, and I get it, and I'm like, this tastes like toothpaste, because uh, to me, spearmint, winter mint, like mint mint, why would I want to taste a milkshake that tastes like toothpaste? I just can't do it. So I get why if cilantro tastes like toothpaste, you, I get why you wouldn't like it, um, but yeah, so. All right. Let's pull that out, whether it's done or not, and move on with our lives. <laughs> uh, where are my gloves? Hmm. I am missing a bunch of my gloves. bread out first. 
into slices and give the sauce just a little bit more time. Come on, cameras. Ugh. My touch screen has gotten really dirty from all the food that gets splashed on it while I film. Crunch is so good. This is a French bread. Oh, look at all those bubbles in it. Looks amazing. Oh, that is definitely not melted all the way through though. I actually usually slice this before putting it in the oven so it's easier to pull out. I can make something with buckwheat flour, a dessert preferably. I actually do not have buckwheat flour because heavy grain flour actually uh, gives me really bad heartburn. So I don't really do it. Does that mean you like the Girl Scout Samoa cookie the best? No, I like the peanut butter one the best. Um, but I do like that one okay. All right, so... Yeah, that's not even close to being cooked through. 15 minutes, yeah, right. Put it back in the bag. Do you guys want to see my trick for how I get this back in the bag after I slice it? So I take the bottom rounded one off, and I hold it upright like this. And then I just... Slide the bag over the top and then quickly flip it. And it just falls right back into place. Alright. Oh, that wasn't anything special about the bread anyway. It was just to eat with my lasagna. Let's pull out the pasta. Got the bubbles going. I can hear it. Okay, sorry, putting the bread back in the oven. Ugh. Now, one of the things that I recommend you do if you like your cheese, um, golden and dark then go ahead and uh, stick it back in the oven after you take the foil off and it will crisp all of this up but our video has gone on long enough and we're just gonna pull this out hold on gonna get a plate Pull one of each out. Woo! Oh, it flipped over. That was not pretty. And I burnt my finger. Picking it back up. All right. So. This is the look that you get when you leave your little ripples uncovered. And if you didn't drop it on the counter, but you can see this is the look you get when you slather and you get that sauce in all of those layers. So it's just a personal choice. I'd rather eat this, but I feel like this looks good in a photo. 
So the blog pictures look like that, but this is how I actually eat. <laughs> All right, let's get out a fork and take a bite. And get a knife. Yum, yum, yum. It smells amazing. Mmm. And it tastes so good, too. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And this is why I don't eat all day until I finish my lives. Because after this is over, I'm just going to stuff my face. <laughs> um, yes, it has all of those flavors that I like. The spinach and the artichoke hearts are just a nice little extra as part of this recipe. Again, you can include anything that you want. I think next time I am going to try the bacon along with that chicken in there. Um, but again, I have all those six over bacon, number seven. <laughs> Anything bacon and I'm in. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what recipes you'd like to see next week. Again, usually I only go live on Tuesdays, but as long as we're all quarantined, I'm gonna try to go live multiple times a week. My goal is to do Monday through Thursday, unless I get sick or worn out or something in my life happens. I'm sure you guys all understand. Um, so yeah, leave me a comment letting me know what flavors you'd like to see. So far we have votes for um, bread, soups, homemade pastas, um, cake decorating videos. You could only use some help with the one you did yesterday. Uh, is there anything specifically cake decorating you'd like to see, like how to frost a cake, how to level a cake, like basic basics, or would you like to see a full and complete cake be done? Uh, years ago, the, actually the very first live video that I did, two, three years ago, for back when I started doing live stream videos was I did my um, my Harry Potter golden snitch cake live and I accidentally went live on my junk YouTube channel <laughs> instead of this YouTube channel so I've been meaning to redo that one so if there's any interest in that I could redo that one as well um, I believe I have all the supplies locked in my house with me <laughs> should probably double check but um, yes so basics specific projects, specific recipes, just let me know. Uh, I will not go live in the next couple of days. I'm going to be catching up on blog work, and then I will go live Monday uh, at 3.30 at 3 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, which is 4.30 here where I am. And thanks for joining me, and good luck. Have a safe and healthy weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.